Uh, what are you doing, Doc? Today we're going to do a video. I'm going to put together, string together a video about our new deep well, our 600 foot deep well over here. Uh, I'll just talk to you about it real quick. I'll go over the cost and what we had to do out here. Uh, I'm not a well expert, so this is a learning process for me too, and I'll share my thoughts with you. So hold on. Hey guys, so before we get started on this video, let me just touch on the cost real quick because uh, if you go to something like Google and try and figure out how much it costs to drill a well, in the southeast, it's pretty much 15 to $20 a foot. Geologically, we don't have all solid rock. Now, if you're in an area that you're dealing with all solid rock and bedrock, you may go up to $25 to $50 a foot for drilling a deep well. So $15 a foot, $16 a foot, but you also have a lot of other costs that you, people don't think about. There is additional linings that you can put inside this. If you have power, you need to get an electrician to rig up the power system. It takes a 220. Then you have to run a one inch PVC pipe all the way down wherever that well is down to your house. You have to connect it all into your house. If you're gonna do a filtration system, you have water tests, you have a pump house, you have a pressure tank, you have control valves. There's a lot of other things that go into this. So my total cost all in for everything here I would say is about $21,000. Now that includes the pump house build, about $21,000. And that's the drill, everything, all the electrical stuff, everything I got done, um, which is actually about what I budgeted, I assumed it was gonna be. So let's move forward and I'll show you what we did on this whole drill project. Uh, this is part of another video that's coming out where I'm gonna show you the pond berm repair, where we remove all of the trees off a of pond berm, which you have to do. No vegetative growth, no trees on berms. That's the rule. So you wanna hit that red button because we've got that one. I've got a water test video. I've got several more videos coming out. But let me walk up here and show you this well pump system. For those of you that don't understand, we purchased this property back in gosh, I think we closed in March of this year, with the understanding that this property basically had been abandoned for almost eight years. And there was a lot of work. It's about a 30 year old house and there's a lot of work and upgrades. So we made a lot of assumptions. One of those assumptions was a new septic system, which I did a video on. So I just assumed looking at the old one, because it was made of all cement, even the drain field had cement pipes on it. That had to be done. This over here is the old board well. This is a shallow board well that the house ran on for 30 years. Uh, it's about 24 inches wide, probably 30 feet deep. We tested the water and you know, it's gonna have contaminants because this area has a lot of cattle and, but it also had bacteria inside of it. So as soon as you test positive for that, and it's probably not the most effective as far as delivering water in this area. So I saved that for like outside irrigation and whatever. I knew <laughs> I was gonna have to do um, a deep well out here. So let me give you the story that goes along with this well. <laughs> we have so much water around here. We have a pond, we have springs, we have this well. And I was thinking to myself, man, I'll probably be hitting water about 250, 300. At 600 feet, they call it a dry well. And they're like, I'm done. I can't go anymore. We gotta call it a dry well. So the day of the drill, <laughs> which I don't have a lot of footage of because it was pretty stressful. The day of the drill, they were drilling down. Yeah, we're at 200, we're at 300. And then I got a phone call. Okay, we're at 400, we're going to 500. I was like, oh my goodness. So then I got the phone call I didn't wanna get, which was we're at 500. What do you wanna do? Do you wanna keep drilling this hole or do you wanna move and drill again? And I'm like, dude, 500 times 50, I'm already, you know, eight grand into this hole. So uh, I said, keep drilling. We hit water at 575. <laughs> so my well is 570 feet deep. Now I will say, I talked to a guy that was here on my job site and he's down the road here and he has a well also, but it's not that deep. And he's got a lot of sediment, it's dirty, it's got a lot of crap inside of it. So I'm on a different water table down there. So as you go through this rock, you're gonna hit different, you're gonna hit water tables underneath that water where the water is flowing through. And I'm on a different one than him. We ran this pump for only about 30 minutes, 60 minutes. And after 60 minutes, I was crystal clear, very lucky. 
Um, I'm going to do a video on a well test, on a water test that I really like. It's a home-based one. It only costs about 40 bucks. It lets you test for lead, bacteria, and all your general um, minerals. I'll put a link to it. I'm going to do a video on that. So hit that subscribe button. I'll do it because it's really cool. Because water tests can get expensive. So anyways, really clear water. But let me show you what we had to do from the, part of this cost is not just the well. So what we had to do was we had to install a 220 line to run up there. And we trenched all along here. And then we trenched all along this driveway and we had to run all the way up to that little how pump house sitting there inside that trench we have a 220 underground rated wire and we have one inch pvc which has all been glued so it's just a standard glued pvc line that runs under here when they put your well pump in they're actually going to use threaded pvc and they're actually gonna use metal couplings. And I'll show you that in a video coming up. I'll show you the pump install. Cause it's gotta go down and it's gotta hold. You can't rely on a glue joint. So it's threaded with metal coupling. So I had the drill cost, 600, 575 feet times 15, whatever that is. Then they actually have a liner. You can pay for an additional liner, which I did do some lining on it. Then we have, um, the additional running of the water to the house, that was several hours of work. Then you have to have a, um, a water pump, pressure tank, and switch. Let me open up the well house, the new well house here, and I'll show you that. So, I'm going to put up a video real quick, and I'm going to show you guys us dropping this down here. But this is the original well head, well head here. They run the pump and wire down, pressure tank, pressure switch. Got it? I'll explain this whole layout here in a minute. down that hole, hooked up to these pipes, PVC threaded with metal fittings on it. They'll put a check valve at some point further down. One of them will have a check valve. In fact, he's got the check valve in his hand right now. And that'll keep that water from back flowing back down. And they will basically lower that pump into that hole right there. Problem is, is just getting it down past that opening. Twist, drop, repeat. Twist, drop, repeat. <laughs> over and over for 500 feet. Howdy. So, a few hours gone by, I actually went home and got some work done and just came back and met them and the system is all done. It really isn't that much more exciting to see. We've got a pressure tank over here. Pretty large pressure tank. Uh, <clears throat> again, this is your main, your main pipe here. Well pump comes up, goes into your pressure line. This is a 40 to 60 PSI switch. I've got a little faucet right here. I've got really good pressure. Plus, I do have an extra shutoff, total shutoff. Kind of have a target sitting around. Let's 
some really good pressure. Morning. I've got my sunscreen on. <laughs> so this is kind of the last step of this deep well process. And uh, I was going to have uh, one of my guys come out and do this who's a carpenter, but I figured Ryan and I will do this because I want it built in a certain way. And let me explain. So we have to have a well house that's big enough to sort of get into. And I may want to put my filtration system in here too. So I wanted it pretty big. So this is just under eight by eight, seven, six by seven, six. And then I'm going to build the roof eight feet, eight by eight. And why am I going to do that? It's because I need to be able to take the roof off <laughs> in case they ever need to come in with a crane. I need them to be able to work on that 600 foot well. So the roof, I'm just barely going to screw it on and just sort of set it on top. Also, um, I wanted to, we put these two by tens directly onto the ground. They're pressure treated, but you'll notice that I'm using two by fours instead of additional two by tens. And why is that? Because what I want to do is I want to capture the natural radiant heat that's coming up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put plywood on top of this, but I want to leave sort of a hole here around this whole pump system. And then I'm going to come in with some kind of insulation over that unit there. So it's going to bring up the natural warmth and heat and the ground will always stay probably 40, 50 degrees, no matter how cold it is. And it'll all go under here and up through that hole. It'll sort of be forced up into that area. So that's why we're leaving this open space in here. No one's really going to be walking and working in here. So, so that's kind of the design build that I'm um, that I wanted. I'm thinking about use that natural heat, so I don't have to have any kind of heater out here. We don't get real cold, but you know we can get down in the teens. And when you get down in the teens, you want to protect your well. So the lumber came yesterday. I'm going to put metal roof on it. And I think what we'll do, hello, Mr. Lizard. Well, the lizards like the sh warm shingles. I think we're gonna finish it off with red cedar shingles. Again, we wanted just kind of a rustic shack. <laughs> we didn't want a, uh, we didn't want a shed. We didn't want anything that looked finished. We wanted it kind of old and rustic looking. Like, uh, like a farmer came out and just built it with hammer and nails. So that's what it'll be. Whew. So we haven't been uh, putting a lot of this on video because it's warm out here actually after the freezes we've had, but here's where we are. So uh, like I said, it's not gonna be a little shed. We wanted a nice little pump house. So we left, we did some interior framing down here, but we left this hole open. Again, we want that, all this heat to sort of radiate up here and we'll actually put insulated cover over that. Um, all we're doing on here, just so you know, is we're just doing a six inch pitch and we're not even doing 16 on center. We're just sort of, uh, you know, this is 90 inches. So we're going 45, 22 and a half, 45, 22 and a half. Um, it's not a house. <laughs> We want it just to look like a cheap old shed eventually. And then I've got a door. We'll put a door here. And now we got to do the other side, but that's where we are. The thing about this is, is I have to have this roof. So this whole thing is built seven foot, six inches square. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to build an eight foot by eight foot roof that just sets on top and basically is held with one set of screws. We'll have eye bolts on either side. So if we need to come in and lift that roof off, we can just put a rope, lift that roof. And I did not use pressure treated on the roof because it's half the weight. So I used regular number two um, lumber on the roof to make it a lot lighter. Whew. So uh, we really didn't film a lot today because we're exhausted. <laughs> it got hot. So here's where we are in today's portion of the build. Again, we've got about a six inch pitch and some of the plywood's up. I did not want to pay for an exterior door, which is like 400 bucks. So I bought an interior door, it's just a pump house, you know, for 120 bucks. We open it up, here's your new pump area. And uh, it's pretty cool. So what we'll do tomorrow is we'll finish putting up all this plywood 
and I was telling Ryan what we're gonna do. Let me show you. Oh gosh, I'm tired. <laughs> we're gonna take one by fours and we're gonna do one by four trim. Oh, we're gonna put one by four trim here and then inside the one by four trim will be the cedar shingles and then we're gonna have a tin roof on top. So to keep things simple, I just took eight foot two by fours. We built the shed so it was seven six by seven six so that these could actually, we could build the outside frame and it would slide right on top. And I have a, about a six inch overhang here. We have pushed it so you can see this. I have a six inch hang, overhang here and then we have pushed it square against the back and I'm gonna put one screw in the back. And then, let me show you what it looks like. All we've done for crosses on it to keep it light. That's all we've done on crosses on it up there. Just enough, just to keep it light. <laughs> Another long day. So we've got everything done. We've got the roof on. Uh, we're gonna have to get some snips. We didn't get any snips for the cut the metal roofing. So we're gonna do that tomorrow. But basically the whole structure is built. So here's what we're doing now is we're taking cedar shake and we're putting them on. You always put a double row staggered so you don't have open crevices. So there's two rows of these staggered. And then the next thing we do is we put up a storyboard. We're putting our storyboard at about nine inches. And then what we'll do, the storyboard just lets you come in and basically just put on like that. And so now you got a nice line. You can go real, real quick and shoot them. We're shooting with two inch nails and that's how we're rolling. Hey guys, so uh, the pump the pump house build got delayed a little bit because we have had two days of clouds and drizzle and I am so happy. <laughs> My fields are finally getting wet after nine weeks. This place has been absolute dust. It has been a dust bowl. But uh, let me just show you where we're at on this. The only thing we have left is we have one side left to put the cedar shingles on and then we're going to paint the door black we'll let this sit for about two weeks and then we'll come back and stain the whole thing with a uh, you know like an outdoor fence stain but we're going to paint that door black and then we think we've decided we're just going to stain the rest of it and you know what cute little well house everybody that has seen us sent a couple pictures out like man i love that thing so it really works well on the back side because the back side doesn't get any sun i decided to put tin roofing on the back that'll keep that mold and whatever off of there let me just open it up and what i plan to do here so what i plan to do here is i'm going to build some kind of frame right behind this system or on the side of it we'll put the filtration system over here I'll have a 110 jack in here because that is 220. And then what I'll do is I'll insulate all of that with some kind of, I don't know, insulative blanket system or something. And uh, because that, all that heat is gonna come up here and surround that. So that's pretty cool. So that's my uh, pump house build. You can actually hear the plumbers down there. They're actually plumbing in new PEX pipe as we speak at the house. So things are looking good. Dark.